we are with us uh, Philippa Brown, uh, Global CEO of uh, PHT, and we literally have her all to ourselves for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> thank you, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here in India. And I think since your last India visit, I think a lot has changed. Uh, for the first time last year, we had digital addicts kind of overtaking the television addicts in India, which is huge. So I want to understand from you, from a media agency perspective, is it uh, more prestigious today to have a client who's investing more on TV in India versus someone who's spending a lot of his money on digital? So well, that's a really good question. Um, the way we look at it, it's not one or the other. It's really what is the best mix to deliver the objectives of your client's business. Um, and we have a, a brilliant tool called Investment Planner, which sits within our platform Omni. Mm -hmm. um, and Investment Planner helps us understand how much we'll be spending on TV versus other channels like digital. And so we never really focus on whether it should be TV or digital. We really do focus on what's the best for our clients to reach their target market. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the way we always approach it. So we're very media neutral okay. as opposed to way, which way we should go. Okay. And in the, in the late, uh, late 80s, if I may say so, uh, most media agencies were focused largely on the media buying process. Um, PhD at, at that point in time had emerged as this challenger brand which was standing for, which stood for uh, creative strategic media planning. Uh, it's been many, many years, decades since then and you're a much larger, older agency. Do you still consider yourself as a challenger brand? Yes, we do. And um, I think the thing that gets misinterpreted by challenger is that it's about the size of a business. It's not, it's about a mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and our mindset is very much about thought leadership, pushing the boundaries, challenging the status quo, um, innovating, you know, anything to do with creativity. So that is still central to our DNA and really at the heart of our core values. Mm -hmm. um, so that remains without a doubt. And some of our largest brands like Diageo, for example, have a challenge mindset as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they're one of the largest companies in the world. Um, so it's not necessarily about size, it's more about behavior and mindset. Okay. And you know, on one hand, you have a scarcity of uh, attention from consumers, uh, which I would call um, a challenge. Uh, on the other hand, you have this option where the consumer is available 24 seven across mediums, which I would call an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Would you say the opportunity dwarfs the challenge or is it vice versa? It's, it's such a good question. And I think this mm -hmm. is something we're sort of grappling with at the moment. One thing that we now talk about is it's not about reach, just mm -hmm. pure reach. It's about attentive reach. So we've built this algorithm into Omni, mm -hmm. which allows us to measure attentive reach, not just pure reach. So we spend a lot of time looking at which channels will mm -hmm. give us the best attentive reach, not just reach. And so if you can blend the two of them, mm -hmm. then that's really what we're looking for is really the whole, the, I suppose, the sweet spot, as they say. Okay. And, you know, interestingly, I think you were appointed the CEO of uh, PhD, Global CEO, a little before the pandemic, 2019. Yeah. Uh, did uh, the Black Swan event that we all came across uh, tamper with your blueprint for the agency globally? Yes, I mean, it, it really did. I um, had been running Omnicom Media Group in the UK. And I'd always been based in London and, and UK based. Mm -hmm. And when I was given this opportunity by Omnicom to become worldwide CEO, I was very excited. And I imagined myself, you know, going to see the 6,000 staff that I have across the world. And then, yes, the six months later, um, mm -hmm. the pandemic hit. And um, I basically ran um, the the network from my bedroom in London, which was uh, <laughs> rather, rather disappointing. Um, so yes, we had to, like everyone, we had to uh, change the way we operated. It was all remote. Um, and now I'm just so delighted that we're out and about and meeting people face to face like here in India. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a very, very difficult start. It didn't stop us though from doing great work. Right. Um, you know, we, during that period, um, well, we just won Diageo, so we transitioned Diageo. Uh, we won Chanel over that period. We won Ecotera. 
Um, we had brilliant retention rates. We became media network of the festival at Cannes in 2021. Mm -hmm. So we still did fantastic work. We just did it in a different way. We had to adapt right. really quickly to that. So it wasn't the start I was expecting. Um, <laughs> and now I feel like I'm sort of, you know, on the road, seeing different markets, getting to see clients face to face. Because I do believe you can't beat face to face interaction. It's it's the best way. Mm -hmm. But we, we did well. We had three very successful years or two, two very successful years, which was great. Which are the big clients you're meeting while... You're here in well, India. I'm here. Well, I'm seeing a number of clients. I'm seeing um, VW Group. I'm meeting with HSBC. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting with Diageo. Um, so I'm seeing a number of clients, which is great. Okay. And, you know, a little after the uh, pandemic, I think we could kind of leave it behind us and normalcy was just on its path to return. Uh, we saw the slowdown in Europe. Yeah. I want to understand from you, how did that impact uh, PhD's revenues uh, globally and for specifically in India? Yes, I mean... PhD, I mean, it started in London, but actually our biggest office is in America mm -hmm. and we have been growing hugely in APAC as well, including India, as you know, we, you know, um, we had brilliant uh, billings growth in 2022. Mm -hmm. So we're much more balanced as a network now. So overall, our global billings still grew and so did our mm -hmm. revenue um, across 2022. So... The fact that we've become less European based as a network mm -hmm. and more LATAM, America and APAC has really helped us. Mm -hmm. um, so the impact was was less than you'd, you'd have thought, really, um, mm -hmm. basically because we've grown so much in the other regions. But were client, clients cautious in Europe while spending at that point in time? Yeah, I mean, there were some markets that had real slowdown and, other, and obviously... You know, it wasn't just about the pandemic. We also had the war in Russia, you know, in Ukraine mm -hmm. with Russia. And that had an impact on Europe as as well. But still the UK, still spending. You know, some of our clients uh, were very um, pandemic. You know, they, it, was, mm -hmm. it was more about, less about what they were spending, how much they were spending. It was how they were spending. So, for example, um, our commerce revenue and billings just grew massively. I mean, e-commerce mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. that period was, you know, huge for us. Mm -hmm. And so there was a shift in the way clients spent as opposed to not spending at all. And I think we've all learned a lot from previous recessions is that when clients stop spending behind their brands, it takes them longer mm -hmm. to recover than if they kept the ad stock going oh, and kept... they're the, consistent with the Exactly, ads. and okay. kept uh, the brand equity growing and, and stable. So I think that also meant that there wasn't a complete drop-off at mm. all. So, you know, it's not like they're going from a standing still. So, um, yeah, we've seen quite a lot of that happening. I was going through the revenues of, of networks across. Uh, I realised that Omnicom closed uh, 2020 with $14.29 billion dollars. Organic growth of 9.4%, almost 10%. Uh, WPP has seen a strong performance in 2022. Publis Publicis Group registered double-digit organic growth. And this was not the nicest year, considering there was yeah. slowdown, the war in Russia, like you said. So what were really, and a lot of uh, laydowns, uh, layoffs happened in uh, mm -hmm. tech, the, in the tech sector overall. Mm -hmm. So what were the factors that kept the media agencies mm -hmm. afloat and growing at that I think um, we've really um, grown our capabilities and we've really created products that our clients want. So our data and tech um, product like Omni and Omni Studio have um, really, um, really caught the attention of our clients and they're really investing in our products in that area. I've mentioned commerce. That was huge growth for us. I mm -hmm. mean, absolutely huge growth. Our content... Uh, our sponsorship division. So all these other divisions now, I mean, we are truly sort of at the forefront of not just media, but offering the complete marketing and comms solutions for our clients. And that's what's really, really driven our growth. The other mm -hmm. thing is clients are coming to us now um, asking us to help them with new operating models. So, you know, all our consultancy products and services are becoming really important to them and to us and driving our revenue growth. So um, I think, you know, we're now really delivering a lot more than media planning and buying. It's a mm. much bigger suite of products and services, and that's why we're growing so much. 
Okay. And if you were to talk numbers, what kind of growth has PHT seen in India and globally last year? Well, we don't we don't give any uh, specific numbers on markets, but it, it's it's in it's plus it's plus mm-hmm. it's in the plus. But I can't give you the exact numbers. Is it going to be them. double this year? I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't really say, <laughs> but okay. it's good. It's, it's it's a strong performance. It's one of our top markets. Because uh, I think overall, uh, Omnicom has remained cautious in its outlook for twenty twenty three. I think three to four. Three to six percent, I think five yeah. percent. Sorry, uh, growth is what they forecast. Yes. So, just trying to understand, would it be the same for PHT even in India, or is it going to be different? No, I think I think it's all aligned. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going into the market um, cautiously optimistic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about there being an economic downturn, but actually, when you look at our revenue forecasts and the invest the forecast for my clients. We're not seeing that come through. In fact, we are seeing growth mm-hmm. in terms of our client spend in 2023. That's what they're forecasting. So whilst there is quite a lot of uh, cautious uh, cautiousness around the world, and this is around the world, um, at the moment, we're still seeing positive growth mm-hmm. uh, being forecast for 2023. Um, but I think, you know, we've just got to keep on monitoring it um, and seeing what the impact of the war is seeing you know um there's some still supply issues there's obviously impact of inflation in different markets Mm -hmm. so we've just got to understand you know what that means but at the moment all clients are forecasting majority clients are forecasting a growth in spend Mm -hmm. for 2023 okay and and just want to understand where does india fit in the scheme of things for phd what kind of revenue contribution does it have overall well, for PST Global, yeah, a rough I mean, number would do. Yeah, it's a, it's an important market. It's a, you know, it's a top ten market for us, yeah, without okay. a doubt. Okay, and you know, we've seen a lot of uh, layoffs happen in the tech sector. Did you see a lot of uh, good talent uh, come back to the agency that has been a challenge? Yeah. Did you see this work out in favor of agencies? This definitely, definitely, without a doubt. Um, I was talking to the team earlier in the town hall that obviously we've had we had the great resignation which happened, um, you know, at the beginning of COVID and, you know, people were going off and doing other roles and, you know, going to tech companies. We're actually calling it now the great return Mm -hmm. because we're having lots of people come back um, from those tech companies. um, And that's meant that the pool of um, resource I mean, it's been great for us, you know, because we've got real capability and talent coming back into the industry. And agencies are a very attractive place to work. Mm -hmm. We work on all different types of clients. You can learn lots of different skills. Um, We invest in our people. Um, I was just talking about some of our training and learning development programs we're putting in place for this year. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and we have flexibility of working as well. So, you know, it's, it's a very attractive place to be. So, yeah, we're having people return from those businesses back to us, which is great. Fabulous. So, you spoke about your global clients. Uh, which are the biggest Indian clients at this point? The biggest clients that we have in glo- in globally. India. In uh, yeah. India. In India. In India. So, um, VW Group would be mm-hmm. one of our largest um, clients globally, as would Diageo. is huge. Um, so, um, you know, Skoda, VW, Audi, all the Diageo brands are very, very big here in India. Um, in terms of the local clients, I think Vivo is very big, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, we've got a number of big, big clients here in India. And, and are you very proud of the number of new clients that you've won? And are you happy about the number of new clients you've won? Yes. There's been Akko and uh, Laughing Cow, if I'm not wrong. I mean, which are yes. the others, if you might want yes, to Yes, yes. No, no I'm, I am. And in fact, um, the pitch slate is massive at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I mean, obviously, number one priority is always going to be on client retention. But number two, we always have to look at um, new business to drive our growth forward as well. And also, you know, to keep keep people motivated and try, you know, working in different sectors as well. But overall, yes, the new business performance in India has been fantastic. And globally, mm-hmm. um, we're actually at the top of the new business league, net new billings. So the way that's worked out on convergence mm-hmm. is that it looks at the difference between gross billings, so net, net new gross billings versus losses. And PhD is right at the top, number one in net new billings, so which is great globally. 
you know, uh, conversely, I think in India, I was going through the RECMA local agency ranking. Uh, PhD didn't really come in the top 10. Um, at the same time, I think uh, in the last three years numbers, you know, it, it did appear uh, on the eighth position yeah. uh, in the, you know, the growth rate. Yeah. So I want to understand from you what, what is, where is the scope for growth here in yes. India? Yes. Is, is scale a problem or is it something else? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think scale is a problem. I think um, really now we have to double down on what makes PhD different. So. Mm -hmm all the thought leadership, the create, our approach to creativity and innovation. Um, we've got a really talented senior leadership team here. Um, we had had some turnover issues. Um, and now I would say the team is really settled. And I think 2023 will most probably be their best year ever, actually. I really do believe that. I think they've got everything in place and mm -hmm. there's no reason why it shouldn't be. Okay. You spoke us. Uh, you spoke some time back about how client relationships today are much more than about media buying. Yeah. So, what does the client of today want from a media agency? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, it's lots of different things actually. So, I think one of the main things that we have to focus on as a agency is understanding what clients want, um, because we shouldn't just be selling to them. We should be understanding what clients want, then packaging up what we have in terms of our capabilities and talking to clients about how we can help them achieve their objectives and grow their business. So that is a real trick and something, mm -hmm. you know, part of the learning and development program that we've put in place called PhD Learn is about brilliant client leadership um, and being able to work with clients to be able to deliver to those um, questions and help clients grow. So, um, you know, that's, it could be anything from helping them with their commas um, you know, their e-commerce challenges right the way through to, as I said, helping them with a new operating model. You know, what do they mm -hmm. in-house? What do they offshore? What do, you know, what sits within agencies still? You know, they're also asking us a lot of questions about how they can work across the whole of Omnicom, not just mm -hmm. Omnicom Media Group, okay. but other areas. So how can we work more closely with Omnicom PR agencies or Omnicom retail agencies? So that's become a big question now as well and how we can go as a collective to, together to our clients. So there's a whole host of things really. That so is in-housing a very big challenge as far as... Yeah, well, we embrace in-housing actually because there's certain data and tech that we can help them with and, and provide in housing. So we're not sort of scared of in housing at all. You know, we, we then become more of a consultancy to help clients, mm -hmm. um, you know, in house certain products. And, and we do agree that certain things that, you know, part of the marketing mix should actually be in house. Okay. You know, it, it just makes it oh, more which, efficient. Well, I'm very, very interesting. Well, I mean, this. yeah, I mean, there's a, well, there's, you know, a whole host of things, but quite a lot of clients now are doing. You know, some of the parts of the commas in-house, um, you know, in um, SEO is going, you know, in-house. So there's quite some of the content, mm -hmm. you know, um, is in-house. So there's quite a few parts of, you know, the marketing mix that it makes makes sense for it to be in-house without a doubt. Okay. You know, and another threat is, you know, we always hear about how consultancies are kind of encroaching into the media agency space. Yeah. Uh Visa, we. I want to ask you: Do you think media agencies are getting into the creative agency space today? I don't think we're actually getting into the. I think we're very different in terms of our starting point. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to see us more mm -hmm. is, um, you know, working more closely with the creative agencies, mm -hmm. uh, especially the Omnicom creative agencies. I think there's a real opportunity. You know, when I first started in the in the business. You know, it was all for service. Um, mm -hmm. I worked at Bartle Bogle Hegarty, you know, and it was big agency, as you know, big global, and it was all together. Then it separated. Mm -hmm. And now I think more and more there's an opportunity for us to work together. together and actually yeah. Omni, which is our platform, mm -hmm. is a platform that is set up for creative and media to work closely together. And that's, again, going to be a big objective in mm -hmm. 2023 for us to work in that platform together to explore audience insights, you know, to work on uh, ideas generation together, to work on briefs together. And mm -hmm. so we need to see more of that happening. You know, another, I think a big trend that we've seen in the creative space, let me say, is uh, coming together of digital and traditional agencies. We've seen something similar happen very recently, even in the media space with SNs and Mediacom coming yeah. together. Do you think that's the way forward, like every big agency which has been very good at traditional needs to come together with 
a digital agency? Is that the way forward for PhD? Yeah, no, I don't think so mm -hmm. um, from my end. Um, I think what we should be better at is packaging our digital mm -hmm. um, offerings because mm -hmm. actually if you look at our um, total billings, 50% of our total billings is digital globally. Okay. So, you know, we have a huge amount of digital um, people and digital billings. Um, mm -hmm. What I don't think we do as well as digital specialists is package and market what we're doing mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes when you're doing so much you get called a generalist as opposed to a specialist right. but actually we're doing exactly the same specialisms I just don't think we're packaging and marketing enough and telling our clients enough about the brilliant stuff in performance marketing for example that we're doing we have huge amount of performance clients and yet we're not you know packaging it in the way we should because you know, we're not focusing on packaging it in that way. We're focusing on creativity or strategy. So a big thing for me in 2023 is making sure our clients understand mm -hmm. our capabilities in digital and data better. Okay. And you spoke about how 50, more than 50% of your billings are on the digital side. Yeah. How is it in India? That was um, globally. Yeah, 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 exactly. In India, it's about 25, 30%. Uh, digital. 20%, yeah, digital. 25 digital. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously there's... There's always definitions mm -hmm. in what is digital and what isn't, but it's it's a big portion of their spend, about a third, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, another thing we are noticing now is you know there's a lot of uh, talk about how Chat GPT may eat away agency yes. jobs. Yes. Uh, I want to understand from you: Have you formalized ways by which it can actually aid the process of media buying? Yes. Is it in it in the pipeline, or is it already yeah. there? Yeah. It, I mean, it's completely in the pipeline. We've got mm -hmm. a working party on it at the moment. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will enhance what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to replace jobs because having looked at a few demos of what it can do, you need human interaction, you know, because it's not the answers aren't always correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, they're never correct. But what it does is they stimulate thinking. So I think you can get to the answer quicker, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, I think it's really exciting. But it's really, yes, it's very much in the pipeline. Um, I know John Wren talked about it in the earnings call. And you will be seeing some announcements in the next couple of months about our product and how we're going to market. It's very, very exciting. Any new efficiencies you're adding in the network at PhD? In, in terms new of efficiencies, any new um, services that you're offering? Yeah, no, so, I mean, I've already mentioned our commons offering, and that's called mm -hmm. Transact, which, again, is uh, is bringing together all the different um, retail marketing elements of Omnicom. So it's bringing together Omnicom retail mm -hmm. with all our e-commerce opportunities and creating this product called Transact, which is a consultancy, but it's end-to-end -end, uh, customer journey in terms of retail. So that's something we're going to be pushing very hard. We've also got another product, an Omnicom Media Group called Tracken, which is all around us working and uh, working with clients on their global marketing um, offering. Um, so uh, Google marketing offering, sorry. Um, so we've got a number. And then importantly and very importantly is OMG Momentum, mm -hmm. which is all around our DNI sustainability offering. Um, so a lot of our clients are looking at um, progressive media, sustainability, um, and that's our, that's our product that we're helping, again, in, uh, from a consultancy perspective, helping them identify what their future uh, strategy should be in these important areas. You've been with uh, Omnicom for more than 15 years. Yes. I'm correct. Uh, you know, how we, we hear so much about uh, diversity, inclusivity. I want to understand from you, uh, did you ever come across any kind of discrimination while you were climbing up the corporate ladder? Because I was speaking to somebody very senior uh, from uh, when I was at Can, and she's heading a network and she spoke about how the industry police would absolutely ignore her at in industry parties. Of course, that's a small part of it, but have you seen something on a bigger scale? Yeah, it's no. So I think, you know, as I was, so I started in the industry in the late 80s. And so I think the industry was much more biased um, in terms of um, male gender. Um, and when I looked up and looked around and saw who was sitting on the boards and the senior leader, there wasn't many women at all uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. I think we've pushed 
really well um, and I think a lot has been done and now I look at boards around the world and they're much more balanced. Um, I still think there's some, you know, there's more to come. I don't think it's job done in terms of diversity um, and it's always top of my mind and top of my agenda. But, you know, being a fem global female CEO just shows that Omnicom you know, doesn't feel that way. There's many global CEOs within the whole of Omnicom that are female, which is great. But we have to keep on pushing and give, um, you know, make sure that we give women and men equal opportunities to uh, grow their careers at Omnicom and PhD. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see it now anymore. Um, but growing up, yes, I did in the industry, without a doubt. Um, I really felt, you know, that, it, you know, I was mm -hmm. being, uh, you know, overlooked, I would say. Okay. But not anymore. Not anymore, I don't think. So you were the first, I think, uh, global CEO of an Omnicom uh, network agency. And then I think your chief talent officer, Kate. Yes. Of course, and yes. then Munaz in India. So yes. there are a fair bit of women yes. out there. Any specific policies or anything that you think in an agency you should, uh, you know, adopt or have in their agencies to make sure that uh, women contribution, I mean, women in leadership positions are not a rarity. Yes, no, I think, um, I think, you know, I mean, as you say, if I look in, in India and uh, PhD, Manaz is, you know, uh, the, the CEO of PhD, I mean, she's in, incredible. I think, you know, we've just got to be more understanding in terms of making sure that women can have the the good balance, you know, between their family and home life and their work life. And I think there is much greater understanding than there ever was before. I was talking about it earlier. And also, I think women should be confident about prioritizing and not trying to do everything. I think one of our, you know, it's just sort of a part of our nature is we try to do too much. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to get better at prioritizing and saying no so that we can get a greater and a better balance. Um, and therefore that does allow us to, you know, be able to have families and great careers and, you know, not being afraid of putting ourselves forward for new career opportunities. Um, I think men are better than women at doing that to have more confidence. Mm -hmm. We've got to keep, you know, building our confidence because it's equal. It's not, you know, there's some brilliant, you know, men and there's brilliant women. So it should be completely equal. Fabulous. May you continue to strike that amazing gender balance and continue to inspire. Thank you so much for Thank speaking to us. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.